Approximately 80,000 people in the UK have multiple sclerosis and 2.5 million people worldwide. This is a disease that starts with attacks of numbness, disturbance of vision, disturbance of walking and weakness and then over time progresses to a stage of continuously progressive disability. In the end, most patients with multiple sclerosis have significant disability that interferes with day-to-day -day living. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. That is to say, a disease where the body's own immune system makes a mistake and attacks the myelin of the brain, thinking that it's an invading bug. Now, alemtuzumab works by targeting the body's immune system cells to try to re-educate them that the brain, that myelin within the brain, is part of the self and should be left alone. The sort of person included in this phase 2 clinical trial is someone with early relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. We felt this was important because we had previously shown in earlier studies that patients with progressive multiple sclerosis do not benefit from drugs which act on the immune system like alemtuzumab. However, we had shown that patients with early relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis have most to benefit. The conclusion from this study is that patients with early disease not only have a benefit in terms of a reduction in relapses, but also their disability actually improves over the course of three years. An unprecedented finding. So one of the main principles of this study was to make sure that the patients who we put into the phase 2 clinical trial were not yet disabled. So they'd had multiple sclerosis for a relatively short time and they were still well, although of course they were frightened about the future prospects. And along with our previous experience, alemtuzumab showed that their disabilities were stabilised and happily some of them even seemed to get better by comparison with the levels of disability that they'd had when they entered the study. So this is encouraging, and based on the results, alemtuzumab is now being studied in phase 3 clinical trials, which are designed to confirm that it is effective, and further to judge just how safe this medicine is for the person with early, active, relapsing-remitting multiple sclerosis. In the 1970s, a brilliant discovery in immunology, which was made here in Cambridge in the Medical Research Council Laboratory of Molecular Biology by the late César Milstein and George Kohler, work for which subsequently they were awarded the Nobel Prize for medicine or physiology, led to the so-called monoclonal antibody technology in which it was possible to make an infinite amount of an antibody directed against one particular antigen. Clearly there were very many implications for biology and medicine of this discovery, but it was quickly worked out that here was an opportunity for making a brand new class of medicines in which a particular target in the body or antigen could be treated by a magic bullet made up of one of these new monoclonal antibodies. But there was a problem, and the problem was that the body would recognise that the antibody it was being given as a medicine was foreign, and so it would react to that medicine and prevent it from working. And so in some way the monoclonal antibody needed to be disguised from the body's own immune system. And it was that process of disguising the medicine, or humanising the monoclonal antibody, that led to the development of the series of CAMPATH antibodies. And the first one to come off the production line, if you like, was called CAMPATH-1H, Cambridge Pathology 1H, and this was a humanised monoclonal antibody that had been designed to target and kill blood lymphocytes or immune cells with a number of plans in mind, 
but essentially to deal with any disease in which there was a loss of control of the immune system so that the body's own lymphocytes were causing tissue damage. So we, we must emphasize that uh, alemtuzumab, the, the drug of interest, is not yet licensed for the treatment of people with early active relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis outside clinical trials. But the drug is now in phase three studies. Obviously, based on our previous experience, we want to make sure that these trials include a very secure and robust monitoring program for patients so that we can pick up any adverse events early and before they've caused the patients too much bother. The ones we're particularly concerned about are thyroid disorders, which we have seen in about 25% of patients so far, although these are relatively easily managed, and immune thrombocytopenic purpura, which occurs less commonly but can be more severe because blood platelet counts drop and that can cause abnormal bleeding. And we did encounter some patients with that particular complication in the Phase two program, as a result of which we're now particularly vigilant in looking out for new cases. Very many of these patients have not only found that no new attacks have occurred, not only found that their disabilities have not progressed, but in fact many of the difficulties, albeit few difficulties, but nevertheless many of the difficulties that they had in advance of treatment seem to be getting better. And so a large number of these patients are now able to do a few things that they couldn't do before they were treated because of improvement over and above stability. Now this hasn't really been seen with treatments before and although it was the early experience in the group that we treated from 1999, we've clearly been cautious about regarding this as a predictable consequence of treatment with CAMPATH1H. But the phase two trial supports this and shows a similar directional trend and we're optimistic that the phase three program will again confirm this improvement in disability over and above the stabilization. So it would be fair to say that for all of the patients who have been selected since 1999, leaving aside the very real issue of side effects, which have been problematic for a few, but from the point of view of managing multiple sclerosis, from the point of view of high efficacy, from the high predictability that the individual will benefit as opposed to the group of patients, this has been a very rewarding experience for our patients. And as physicians, we too, of course, have reflected in their pleasure and happiness.